Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to talk about just how bloomin cheap it is to jump aboard Wi-Fi 6e at the moment. Now Wi-Fi 6 has now been knocking around for a good couple of years at least and although the slow rollout on Wi-Fi 6 wasn't exactly lightning speed now pretty much every modern device you guy that buy that's got wireless connectivity on it if it does have any kind of performance potential for multimedia or otherwise it arrives with Wi-Fi 6 on board. If you buy a new iPhone, a new Samsung, a new Pixel, if you buy even the newest generation Amazon Fire TV stick, they're all Wi-Fi 6. And now, with Wi-Fi 6 getting a lot more established, suddenly Wi-Fi 6E has tippy-toed into the arena, and there's a lot of users wondering, yeah, should I bother? Well, I would say, for the most part, the big takeaway that you're going to get from this video is that Wi-Fi 6E thanks to the evolution of Wi-Fi 6 that came before it and set a lot of the groundwork for a lot of the hardware devices, drivers and individual components from companies like Realtek and Intel, the result is that making the jump to Wi-Fi 6E is stupidly cheap and the benefits, particularly for those that are already harnessing Wi-Fi 6, are actually quite big. So if you head over to a lot of budget websites right now and of course, let's all say it together, AliExpress, if you head over to there where they've got loads and loads of components there that are off-brand, non-brand, completely no brand, you see on there that right now you can get a Wi-Fi 6E to USB adapter for about 20 nicker, even cheaper than that in some places. And when you scroll through, you suddenly find out that not only have you got, as mentioned, those components that you can upgrade inside your mobile device or your desktop device, but you can get some like that. And this is the EDUP Wi-Fi 6E to USB adapter. At the moment, this is under 20 quid. You can even get it cheaper than that, depending on where you are in the world. And it allows you to just bolt on a Wi-Fi 6E connection, network connection to your host device. And in this video, we're going to talk about what this includes. Because although there are a bunch of other Wi-Fi 6 adapters on the market, this is the one I found with the most you know, positive reviews. It was the one that I saw on there that seemingly had a little bit more going on for it than a lot of the others. Even though the hardware architecture is near enough identical on all of these adapters, and more than likely they're all rolling out the same factory, I will say that this one seemingly gave the best presentation as far as the brand is concerned, and we're going to talk about what this brings to the table, what it doesn't bring to the table, whether you should bother going for it, and if you should, who's going to benefit most. But before we go any further, let's have a little look. Inside, you don't get very much. What you get, you've got your instruction manual there. We'll go through that in just a moment. And you've got the adapter itself. As you can see, a couple of big old antennae there and the main base model. So we'll pop that base model down there. We'll grab our little antennas. And before we attach them, that is how small we are talking. This device is USB powered. Again, you will need to get the Realtek drivers for the RTL8832CU. I'll show you that later on, but I'll hopefully link to those in the description as well. And that's really all you need. As soon as you attach it, bonk, into your system, you attach the uh, wireless antennae. Let's go for it there. Pop on the other one there. It really is this straightforward. And boom. Pop that, turn that around actually so it's tight. Pop that there. And boom. It really is as straightforward as that. And just like that, popping that in your system, installing the driver, which is completely free, restart your system, you've got Wi-Fi 6E access. The build quality is a little plasticky. A lot of the more modern uh, Wi-Fi 6 adapters that we've uh, talked about on the channel, as you can see, there's an absolute load of ventilation there at the top. I won't say that the antennas are blowing me away in their uh, quality there because again as soon as we're on the tightening cycle that's absolutely fine but then there's even a little bit of looseness it falls over so just bear in mind that unless it's at its tightest point you're not going to get the rigidity on those antennae as you might like again going through the build quality of it from start to finish um, as it's wi-fi 6e it means you have access to three separate bands now for anyone that's not aware, Wi-Fi 6E is basically Wi-Fi 6 as it is, but it opens up this new frequency. You've got the 2.5 and the 5 gigahertz band that you've always had access to, but what this does is allow access to the 6 gigahertz band. 
So the 2.4 gigahertz band would give you 2. Um, 574 uh, megabits per second. So again, about 57 megabytes. Um, the 5 gigahertz band there where, uh, has a, an available bandwidth of up to 2,400 um, uh, megabits. So again, that's about 240 megabytes bandwidth there. And the 6 gigahertz band, that gives you another 2,400 megabits or 240 megabytes per second. So you're like, yeah, that sounds great. But one of the things, and again, EDUP is as guilty of this as anyone else. And by everyone, I mean every single router manufacturer in the world. They highlight these big numbers here, the AX5400 there. And what that means is this thing can support um, 5,400 megabits per second or up to 540 megabytes almost halfway to 10g that's fantastic right but very few of them actively advertise on the front that it is near enough impossible for one device to get that performance number because that is total bandwidth and most devices any device you're going to connect this into or any native wi-fi 6 or wi-fi 6e device that is a single connection you can bond multiple connections but you're still going to need to have multiple network adapters for them this is a single network adapter and yes you've got the two antennae which will massively expand your coverage area but just bear in mind this is a single network adapter and therefore a single connection which means that connection again depending on architecture and the route we're in question you're going to get between 1.2 and maybe 1.8 in some cases 2.4 gigabit connectivity there but again it's incredibly centric to your network protocol and the network adapter or adapters at your disposal now that extra 6 gigahertz frequency there that band that uh, wi-fi 6e brings to the table the reason that's going to become important for a lot of users is when you've got a busy network traffic environment let's zoom in just on the 5 gigahertz band there so if you're a wi-fi 6 user you've got your wi-fi 6 router you've got your wi-fi 6 phone your wi-fi 6 tablet your wi-fi 6 laptop whatever you've got those devices and they're all on 5 gigahertz bear in mind they are going to be sharing on a single 5 gigahertz band 2,400 megabits per second. And as good as that sounds, if everyone's on Wi-Fi 6, they're all using that bandwidth. And therefore, the 2,400 megabits per second, if you've got four Wi-Fi 6 devices all active at once, unless you're using any kind of uh, POS or QoS, priority of service or quality of service, they're all going to share it. So suddenly, 2,400 megabits results in 600 megabits each, 60 meg, which ultimately puts you in the same area you would have got with Wi-Fi 5. So on busier network environments, as good as it is to have this larger bandwidth to play with, oh, so as good as it is about having all that extra bandwidth that Wi-Fi 6 gives you, the busier your environment's getting, the less devices you can put in that network environment. And that's where Wi-Fi 6E comes in. Because then you've got this whole separate area on the spectrum that allows you to add those Wi-Fi 6E devices. And thanks to incredibly affordable 15, 20 NICA Wi-Fi 6E USB adapters, it makes it a lot more, uh, more functional and easier to jump on board that. Now, there will be people watching this thinking, well, why bother with 6E? I'm just going to wait for Wi-Fi 7. And that's true. When Wi-Fi 7 comes around, and we've already done some testing, uh, not testing, we saw some testing even, um, by Realtek over at Computex this summer when we were at the big trade show event there. And we saw, thanks to Wi-Fi 7, not only having access to the bands that we've discussed, but also having access to the 320 uh, megahertz frequency, um, Wi-Fi 6E only goes up to 160, that will result in much larger performance numbers and bandwidth to play with. But... Wi-Fi 7 is nowhere near established, and it will probably be at least a year to a year and a half before Wi-Fi 7 even approaches affordability, and probably longer before we see the likes of a USB adapter. And if you think for 20 NICA as an upgrade, and now with Wi-Fi 6E routers arriving at effectively the same price as Wi-Fi 6 routers, it really undermines waiting for Wi-Fi 7 because the performance um, benefits and the price being uh, the price difference being much much lower right now mean that Wi-Fi 6E is actually quite a desirable proposition. Last year, 
we talked about this. This was the D-Link USB to Wi-Fi 6 adapter, and this left us incredibly impressed. This allowed us to add a Wi-Fi 6 connection to the most bog standard device you wanted. It was just uh, just USB 3 or USB 3.2 Gen 1, and it allowed you to add a Wi-Fi 6 connection to any device and have access to that larger frequency. This is cheaper than that. It has more bandwidth coverage thanks to those additional antennas, whereas this being integrated with an internal antenna and alongside that lower price point, it allows you that six gigahertz band, not just the 2.4 and five gigahertz band of Wi-Fi six adapters. So what we're gonna do right now is hold on, flick over to my laptop that we're utilizing here and hopefully we'll flick over to the screen in just a moment we'll flick over to it and um, as you can see here on screen right there we've got the edup adapter there there it is for ae nicker again you can largely ignore all those price drops that you see on a lot of these and again there are cheaper options out there but i can have opted to this one simply because it seemed like a more complete package although i'm not overly keen on the fact they still don't talk about the individual speeds of connected devices which is what i'm going to show you now now i'm utilizing a wi-fi 6 router in this network environment we're not going to be looking at traditional speed simply because that is obviously going to be depicted on your upload or download we're looking at network here so as you can see we've already downloaded the drive already done it in, in advance on device um, oemdrivers.com and as you can see very easy very small file double click install you have to restart your system so while we're doing that if we open up our network connections as you can see i've got um, an ethernet connection there which i've disabled i've also got a, a bluetooth connection which i've disabled and my existing wi-fi connection i've gone ahead and disabled as well and that was utilized an Intel uh, Wi-Fi 6 card inside this laptop system there. So if we go ahead and connect our new um, Wi-Fi adapter, I will say because we've already installed and restarted the system, it should connect like that. So what we'll do is we'll give it five seconds and then from there I'm just going to refresh this list on screen. I'm seeing a blue light while it's got connected and I've refreshed and there it is. There's our Realtek 8832 driver dongle there, the EDUP one. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and enable that connection. Now I've already hard saved all of the Wi-Fi connections in the network environment to this network um, adapter and the network preferences of this machine. So in theory, it should go ahead and automatically connect to the Wi-Fi 6 connection in my network environment. It might not. What we're gonna do is find out just as straightforward as this is. So as we can see, it's identifying a network and it's connected to the Wi-Fi 6 connection here in my network environment. Double click. And as you can see, we are connected via 1.2 gigabits per second connection there. Again, it will differ a lot on your own network environment. And it, if we were using a Wi-Fi 6 router or we were connecting via the 2.4 gigahertz um, band, then we would have seen a drop in that connection. But as you can see, I've now established a 1.2 gigabit per second connection to my local area environment, which is faster, remember, than standard network connectivity. Now, that is higher speed than that of a wired LAN connection at one gigabit. And that is the big takeaway here. This is a 20 nicker upgrade that will present you with greater bandwidth potential speeds than that of a wired connection but just bear in mind that you're going to need a wi-fi 6 router to get at least those speeds and a wi-fi 6 e router which opens up the whole 60 gigahertz band in order for you to play with case in point if we go into the network settings there right click and go into properties go into the configuration we'll be able to see that in the advanced tab i've disabled that 2.4 gigahertz band across all of my network adapters but We've got the uh, Wi-Fi, uh, sorry, the 5 gigahertz band and the 6 gigahertz band. Now, Wi-Fi 6 um, standard devices out there, some of them arrive with multiple 5 gigahertz bands, which, again, does open the door to similar performance that you may see here. But the 6 gigahertz band just has more room to play with out there. And with, you know, a lot of these being quite, quite rudimentary but accessible services, that are available on most Wi-Fi protocols, but also included in a simple 20 quid adapter, it just seems a bit of a no-brainer to me that if you're already thinking about buying a Wi-Fi 6 router and Wi-Fi 6 e routers have dropped down in price substantially, that makes this little device remarkably impressive as far as I'm concerned. But 
we're going to do a few more performance tests with this, notwithstanding comparing it against a standard uh, one gig wired connection in terms of fidelity, but also comparing it against comparatively priced Wi-Fi 6 USB dongles in the market, not just that dealing. But let me know what you think. I'll do a link to everything we talked about uh, in this video thus far in the description below. And if when we do the performance testing, do let me know what you would like to see in that. Remember, we can't just do standard internet speed tests because internet speed is not the same as network speed we want to focus on network performance tests also we are going to see if this can be utilized on a nas whether that is utilizing um, a third-party github plugin or if there's any official downloadable real tech drivers that can be used to add this to a nas system stay tuned for that but apart from that thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video and apart from that have a great week and i'll see you next time